Good afternoon. Today we're going to talk about processing uh, 1099s in Dell Type Vision. I'm going to start with gathering and understanding the W9 um, so your process is successful. Any vendor that you write a check to, preferably before you write a check, you'd want to get a uh, request for taxpayer identification number and certification. This form is available on the IRS site and is available in a fillable uh, PDF form. Um, so what it is, it's gathering the information for the proper name, of the individual or the business, their DBA. Most importantly, although it's all important, the type of entity they are, because that's going to determine whether or not they're going to get a 1099 and what type of 1099 they're going to get. Their address, the requester's name, their social security number, likely if they're individuals, and a federal identification number if they're a business, and then they would simply sign off on the form. An instruction sheet comes with a W-9 and explains more thoroughly who is and who is not going to get one. Once I've received my W-9 from a vendor, I would then go into Vision and update the accounting tab in my vendor file under the Info Center not only putting the ID number in, but what type of ID it is. Um, and then checking the box for the 1099 required. It's up to you, and you need to know you are storing some Social Security numbers, as you can actually insert the uh, W-9 um, graphic file or PDF file that the vendor has given you for permanent record keeping. When I believe I've gathered all my W-9s and entered them into the vendor file accounting tab, I would then go to my Utilities section under Navigation, and I'm going to need to initialize my year. When you initialize, it's very important, you can see I've done this a few days ago, that I initialize before I start writing checks for the new year. Um, you can certainly work around it if you've started to write checks and you initialize late, um, and we'll cover that when you go to Process on uh, the actual forms. Uh, but I've initialized, and what that does is it takes um, all the paid to date for last year uh, information and places in that field I was showing you. And that's the field that uh, Vision uses uh, to create the 1099. So or pretend I have initialized again, which I'm not going to go do. Uh, another thing I like to do is before I go to actually process them, is I run a particular ledger report. And that ledger report's going to tell me um, how much I've actually paid each vendor in totality uh, for the calendar year, in this case 2016, um, by those who I think are supposed to get 1099s and those I do not think are going to get 1099s. And this allows me two things. It allows me to uh, go seek some new W-9s that I may have omitted during the year. Um, and it gives me a backup report. Um, that um, the payments vision has is actually what's going to produce on the uh, on the 1099 itself. So I would go into my options and I would say something. I want year-to-date information, and I want to sort that information uh, by uh, it'll give me a subtotal by uh, whether they get a 1099 or don't get a 1099. I would then apply it and then uh, run, uh, run the report uh, by printing that report. So once I've analyzed my report, my voucher schedule, I uh, revisited um, additional W-9s, um, I'm then going to actually go in and process my 1099s because I've initialized, I've checked who should and shouldn't get it, I've read the instructions. So I've gone to my navigation under accounting, under accounts payable, form 1099 processing. So the next thing I'm going to do, and you're going to get another shot to do this, um, if um, you in fact feel as though uh, you need to add one more person to the list, um, you can generate your work file again. Uh, but you wouldn't want to generate a work file once you've mailed them uh, out the door. This would sit there. So if I've actually performed generate my work file, and um, I'm in pretty good shape to 
uh, edit and review them and I'll show you how you do that uh, next. So I'm in the edit mode and my generated work file generated 49 records and I can paginate through the records one by one or do a drop down and select. I can also do a search on them. In each of my records and for various reasons you may say, oh no, I, I, that's wrong. You're going to be able to avoid it. Um, you're going to be able to produce maybe one record that's for corrected if you've already mailed one in and you need to edit that one. Or you can exclude it from this run. So because it comes to the page, there's a whole number of reasons you may want to exclude uh, 1099 um, um, uh, or run them in two batches. There, there are a number of reasons for that. As I continue through the edit mode, there may be a few other pieces I may choose to edit. Um, for instance, the address rather than reinitializing, or more commonly, um, the type of 1099 that it is. So in the case of the sample, this is not employee compensation, but had it been something I paid the attorneys, I'd simply cut and paste that into the attorney uh, box. So it doesn't change the total amount. It's a reporting requirement for the IRS. When I return to Form 1099 process, it's going to ask me if I want to save the changes I've made. Um, in most cases, you'd say yes. In this case, I'm just going to say no. Last but not least, before I uh, print my uh, 1099s, I'm going to go verify. Uh, payments. When you verify payments, it'll again check against the vision file and if you recall that initialized field in your vendor file called paid last year. So this dialog box pops up and you would say you're going to print it and that's going to produce a printed report that shows if your uh, 1099s indeed match what vision shows checks were paid to that vendor. And this is what a successful 1099 verification looks like. There's no differences. That is what vision processed. That's what's in the vendor paid last year table. Now you can investigate this, uh, but the fix is to uh, uh, put the process payment, the actual in the paid last year in your accounting tab uh, on your vendor file uh, because this is uh, what actually got paid. Th this mistake often happens because uh, you've initialized um, in the wrong year um, and uh, you've written checks into the following year. So we're almost there. Uh, Vision does electronic file your 1099s uh, for large filers. I'm not covering it today. And it does accommodate state IDs where 1099s need to be filed with certain states, depending on state requirements. Um, so I'm going to jump over to printing them and spend a moment on advanced printing. So I would preview them and maybe get a few white sheets and then um, go to advanced printing. And my experience is that when you're in advanced printing, you're going to need to um, work on the alignment of the 1099. So my procedure's always been um, take a printout of the uh, 1099 uh, two-part form is what this is. And you can get them through your vendor. I would probably recommend the vendor that Dell Tech recommends. So the best shot that they align. And um, um, preview them, print them, uh, and print a few of them on a copy of the 1099 form because you're going to need to print um, on a laser printer quite a few printouts of the 1099. Uh, one for the IRS, possibly one for the state, one for the employer, and two for the employees. So that's actually five printouts for each 1099. So you do want to spend some time aligning them. And I'm just going to close that and um, um, that's it. Um, I think that fully covers uh, the steps you need to take to print 
uh, 1099s and Dell Tech Vision. Thanks for listening.